People, my people, welcome to the, in, in, the <clears throat> sorry, interview with Imbu Distillery. Mick and Mel sat down with me in their distillery and we chatted. Staying down. I was happy at his funeral. I was oh, thank God you're gone. Um, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> with us, it's a case of we keep on saying to our 12 year old, you know, if we can show you the number of people who you should really pay attention to yeah. who aren't paying your bills. And he goes, who? And I said, Fuck all. <laughs> it, it, it's a very small number. How many how, how many is it, Dad? It's, it's fuck all. And we keep on saying, when you get older, if they're not sleeping with you, if they're not paying your bills, then you have the right to tell them to fuck off. Yeah. Life lessons from Odin, everybody. Yeah. Did you capture that? Um, that's got to go on the record. Should we get back to the gym? <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah, so we, we, have tried, we have tried not to marginally responsible for that. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. ADHD people, it's in action, it's real, and um, it's had a couple of drinks inside it. Um, Sorry. No, 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 no. It more likely makes for great videos because at some point, I'll case of start counting the number of times we we swore and just like I say, drop it, drop a G and T, and by the end of it, you're going to be happy and you won't give a rat's ass about much of anything. So, okay, you've mentioned, you've actually touched on it a couple of times. You want to grow. Um, I know that you've got a bar in Ivanhoe. Yeah, so when we first um, set up the distillery here in Research, we weren't able to open a cellar door. We are having another crack at opening one up here, but in the meantime, we opened a tasting room slash cocktail bar in Ivanhoe. But it's tiny, just a little 20-seater. Does the job for now, but we are hoping to get something open so people can actually visit us at the distillery itself, see where we're making it, all that jazz. Yeah, so a la Four Pillars, which yeah. is how you spend $10 million. It ain't going to be a $10 million operation because <laughs> no. we just don't have that, but <laughs> a very <Yeah>. rustic, uh, <laughs> small there's, version. There's a lot of distilleries out there that uh, started from different backgrounds, us being hospitality background, most of our wages are very freaking low. And I've been lucky because mine have been predominantly management based, hands-on management based. So I'm still working, working hard every day, but the wages are not big. There is a lot of distilleries out there, and I'm not going to name them because there's so many where they're backed by, you know, I, I, yeah, I was, they've got some massive backers, massive backers, or they've come into distilling by way of massive marketing wages um, that, that they can support yeah. doing it the right way the first time instead of doing what we've done, which is. Yeah starting it on a shoestring hopes and prayers and then borrowing more money and borrowing more money and borrowing more money and borrowing more money. And we're talking credit card high interest. Growing (laughs) slowly and steadily um, at our own pace. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we do. And we're four and five years selling now, I think. Yeah, we're almost five. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we could have got got here a lot faster if we'd had, um, if we'd sold our souls and bought on a massive backer. But we. But like, then we wouldn't be in view. No, we wouldn't be in view. It wouldn't. It, we wouldn't be able to go to bed at night and go, "Wow, we did this." Pinch ourselves and go, "Wow, we did this." All our recipes are our recipes. Like we've created them from scratch. They're our stories. Even right down to like a sunflower seed vodka. They're like, "What? What's a sunflower seed vodka?" It's like, well, I don't like a harsh vodka. I can't be bothered with a harsh vodka. It doesn't make sense to me. But I really want a smooth vodka. So we've made a smooth vodka. We've used sunflower seeds and citrus. Personally, I'm just here for the gin. <laughs> yes. And Not into the vodka, people. The, What's the point? Put gin in it. Put gin in it. But some of our products have actually came around by um, uh, by mistake and by... Oh, lots of them are by mistake. Yeah. It's then replicating it, which has been yeah. the fun part. I actually understand the smooth vodka. I tried Rahasia vodka, which is Indian. Do you need to shrink it? Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's just... Sorry. But it, what it means, Rahasia is san- secret in Sanskrit and Indonesian, yeah. the same word. And I tried to contact them and say, look, I can't figure out what your botanicals are. Tell me. And they got all cute with, oh, well, you'll have to drink it because I'll have it. It's shit. Um, vodkas in the West, and I say in my review, look, vodkas in the West are very smooth drinking. Mm. Yeah. You go and drink Absolut, for example, and it's a very smooth drop. It slides down the tongue when you freeze it. Uh, and it's really good drinking. Mm. Um, I think the Polish blood, you have the Zabrowski or something that's got the buffalo grass in it. That gets a bit of flavour. Especially when the buffalo's peed all over it. I mean, it's just like... 
Yeah. That's extra favorite. That just yeah. made with protein. Yeah. Yeah, the umami. Yeah, <laughs> umami. <laughs> Salted. Oh, I really want to set acidity. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's got the um, it's got the full body in it. It's you know the doc, young doctor's in love with the professor's dipping his finger in it and then going, and then the kid goes on and then you're getting it wrong. He's not diabetic and eventually the lecturer flashes it and grabs the glass and knocks it back and he goes, "You fucking asshole." He starts drinking the neat pee and the student says, and goes, I saw what you were doing. And he, started, he was doing it to the lecturer and the lecturer just flushes it and starts drinking the urine in front of the class. Wow. So, how did we get there? I don't know. I really the umami know. of, yeah, of okay. buffalo <laughs> okay. grass. So yeah, um, with the Indians, yeah. they just case, look, podcasts shouldn't be this way. Yeah. Um, but I bet we do have some feedback. Like People are used to a harsh vodka. Yeah. So I've had people say, that doesn't taste right because it's too smooth. Yeah, I've but had you a lot know, of Russians I, not come up and try and go, oh, you do a vodka. And I'm like, yeah, I do vodka. Okay, yeah. so that's a terrible accent. <laughs> it, it, yeah. it, da, vodka. Look, yeah. da. Well, you can't please everybody. No. We're not trying to. We believe in our products and yeah. we're oh. the kind of people that if you don't like what we have to offer you, we'll, we'll suggest, suggest a gin that we or a vodka that we think by an, you know, an Aussie fellow, Aussie distiller that we think that you will like. Mm. Yeah, oh, but Solly, um, the IG years ago, used to make a chili vodka, and I well and truly remember mixing that with ginger ale, no lemonade, and it tastes like ginger ale. Mm. The next morning, there was no ginger ale. <laughs> I was Ooh. as sick as two dogs, um, because if not going back to then. And since then, Solly's actually taken the chili vodka off the market. And it's wow. good. if you want a marketing thing, go and get a whole lot of local chilies and make your chili vodka. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think that it's also being true to yourself. It's a crowded marketplace. Yeah, yeah it really. Is. I mean, I'm struggling to get out of Metro Melbourne before my liver fails. <laughs> um, and I mean, occasionally you jump overseas. Um, and I want to get into the uh, Kiwi um, gin in case of what the fuck next or and that. Yep. Yeah. Because um, in our house, we worship the um, the twin goddesses of. What the fuck just happened and who the fuck did it and <laughs> there's actually a six person lives in my house and it's nobody because nobody ever does it yeah, yeah, yeah. There's three kids in the room and he did it oh, nobody, nobody. Yeah. it's a that fucking ghost <laughs> it's it, 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 we've got a poltergeist because it routinely throws <laughs> things through windows and um yeah. and you know messes stuff up it's a case of yeah so but you have to be different with yeah, so many gins i mean even chatting to you this morning you're pointing out gins that we literally did not know about. Mm. And you go, oh, but he lives five kilometers this way or he lives mm. 10 kilometers mm. that way. And you go, okay, um, I devote between three to four hours a day, every day to this, and I'm still finding new producers. And there's a, there is a lot of producers. And I think my, I don't have a problem. It's like the market is so huge. I do have a problem if people, what I feel, they're not coming into it for the right reasons. So where I'm a, as a baker, right, years and years and years ago, and I don't care who I insult with this comment, uh, there was a lot of accountants. Go on, Mick. Speak, speak your mind. Come yeah. on, speak your mind. Accountants, doctors and lawyers, where, which went, you know what, we're going to open a baker's delight because we've got the fucking money and the money's there. And that kind of stuff pisses me off because it, it does take away that ability for artisans to be able to, and we're using baker's delight as an example, but that happened in baker's delight. And they didn't care about the stuff. Well, it was they a franchise. It was a well, franchise. So they they a, were solely about. They were selling the franchises. People jumped on board. Yeah. But they jumped on board because of the popularity, not because it was a lifestyle change. And you can write off. Passionate this. about or yeah. whatever. And, and it's a tax write off. And it was a tax yeah. write off for these people who had a shitload of money. And the same, yeah. I see the same thing with the alcohol industry. It's like if you're in it for the right reason, and I deem that we're in it for the right reason. We're in it, and Cameron and Stu, they're in it for the right reason. They did it because they wanted to do it. And not just wanted to do it. They've got the passion behind creating something that becomes an Australian brand and something that people are passionate about. And you can stand on your pedestal and say, hey, I did this. This is what I'm true and passionate about. We started this because we wanted an out, out of the food industry, but still be very tactile with what, what we spent the last you know, 67 years doing. For us, you know, having that, being in food, but not waking up at any time around the clock yeah. and having that having a product that you can sell more than more on than the day it's created minutes. which yeah. is the problem with bread and pastry and Cut. even cafes yeah, yeah. restaurants I mean, it's, it's so on the day yeah. or you're fucked 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, I completely understand. I um, I actually spent a fair bit of time washing pots and mm. and yeah. doing that stuff. I actually worked at the Grand Hyatt at the turn of the century, and then went off and became a gardener because I screwed up royally. Pull 